don't know when it really started to go wrong. Um, I was really late in taking drugs. I didn't take drugs until I was 24. Um, and like I've said, it was on the party scene, going out clubbing and raving and things. Um, and I went to a few raves without taking any drugs. It's just that I saw other people doing it. I thought, I will not try that. Tried it. And then, like I say, you know, the following morning, I went round to my friends asking for some more. And then for another 26 years, it was on a daily basis, you know, that I was taking, you know, the drug of my poison, my drug of choice was amphetamines, ecstasy, which did go into cocaine. Um, but um, for a few years, it was just a recreation. I thought it was a recreational drug where I'd go out. Um, the ecstasy was mainly at weekends, but the amphetamine was daily, on a daily basis. It, it got me straight away. I do remember though, um, when I was like, sort of on the come down, um, thinking about things, you know, in my childhood and what have you, and then I, would, I tried to block it out. Uh, I think this is when I started taking stronger stuff to try and block that out, because um, I didn't like what I was, I was thinking. Um, I did try detoxing myself at home. Um, every time it come up to my son's birthdays or I was going to a function or something, I just think, right, this is the last time I'm going to do it. No, it just, it had me. It had me, whatever it was, it just had me. Basically, I'd found out some quite upsetting news about my father. Um, terminally ill. I just, I, I just, no. I wanted to, I couldn't cope with it. I just couldn't cope with it. Um, because I didn't think I had feelings, anything, because I used to suppress them all the time with drugs. If it, anything happened in my life, I used to just, and I couldn't deal with it, I took the drug because it gave me a high. Um, I couldn't deal with life as such, um, I didn't know how to live without the drugs. Uh, and then, like I say, when I found out, you know, that my dad was ill and he wasn't gonna be able to get better, um, I wanted to die. I just thought, I can't live, I, I just can't carry on like this. I didn't know what else there was. It was either die or I, I actually did say to my partner, lock me up. You've got to lock me up or I'm dying. I said, if you don't lock me up, I will go and get more gear. Um, and that's when they made, it was my sister who made my partner ring um, a helpline and they got through to Linwood. And, and I was admitted into Linwood July the 6th, 2016. Broke. Broken. Sorry. brings it all back. <sighs> Absolutely broken. Wanting to die. Wanting my dad to live. Just didn't know any direction. So I, I come into Linwood. They admitted me in. Um, a couple of the residents came and introduced themselves to me. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm still in contact with one of them now, a lovely lady. Won't mention her name. Um, and I just remember being taken to my room, searched, uh, which they've obviously got to do, you know, they've got to search and make sure you've not brought anything in with you. Um, and I just remember my partner just saying, do everything that they ask you to do. And I said, well, I, I, it's either die or this. You know, I, I was so low. And I didn't know what else there was to do. So I, I did what I was, you know, was suggested. Just let them help you, let them guide you. Um, but the detox was horrendous. I'm not gonna say it wasn't. It was horrendous, um, but worth it, really worth it. 
you know, the first two, three days are hell. I ain't gonna lie to anybody, it was hell, and I never wanna go there again. The staff are amazing here. They knew how to, you know, talk to you, you know, the, the, the therapy they give you, and it's not like it's out of a textbook. It comes from their heart, they're so, it's genuine. You know, and, and for someone to show you some care and consideration and love and understanding, it was like, hang on a minute here, this could be the answer to me getting off all the crap. And for my, my advice is, if you're suffering and you're low and you think there's nothing else, give it a go. It's... I'm crying because I'm so blessed and grateful. Two rehabs, not just Linwood, but any rehab. Because I, for 25 years, could not stop. I was killing myself. Didn't realise. You know, and this is, it's, it's like home. I love coming back here. I come back to the, you know, the, the workshops that they have monthly. Um, you know, and I come back weekly. Um, it's not like you come into rehab and then, you know, to take your money and then, you, you know, you do your four weeks or six weeks, depending on however long you come in for, and then they shut the door on you. It's not like that. You can come back for aftercare. I lost my father, uh, which was very hard, six months after coming out of rehab. Um, the family, all the family were really frightened that I was going to turn back to the drugs. But no, thanks to Linwood, the 12 step program, I was given the tools to help me through this. I also had a sponsor as well who's worked me through the steps. Um, you know, and, and the friends that I've met at meetings as well, there's always somebody on the end, you know, someone there to help. You've just got to ask. If I just, if I can't get through to my sponsor, I can ring Linwood. There's always someone there to talk to. Never alone. If you ask, ask. That's all you've got to do. Ask for help. It's not easy some days, you know. But it's living life on life's terms, having a life today. I didn't have a life before. I just existed. I was just an existence. Um, I was an embarrassment for my family. But I'm not that today. You know, I'm very proud of who I am today. Um, and I work on a daily basis to keep my sobriety. Um, and it works. It does work if you work it. Don't get me wrong, there's been a couple of times where I thought, oh, I don't need it, you know, it's this, it's that, I don't need it. That's when you do need it. That's when you do need it, because that little man is there, you know, just waiting, so. Whatever it is, you know, that I'm doing, that I was taught and given the tools by rehab, it works for everybody. If you work it and you want it, I want it like nobody's business. I do, I do, I don't want to go back there, no. I never thought I'd come back into this room. This is where I had the light bulb moment. I remember it like yesterday, where I broke just broke down completely, um, which at the time wasn't good, but now I understand it had to be done. You have to get that real low before you can get that real high um, without drugs, without a drug, with life, life itself. It's amazing. It really is amazing.